of the word brings light and illumination. I pray that this evening you will minister your word unto us. We will never be the same as we hear your word preached to us in Jesus' precious name. Everybody say a big amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll make very prosperous. Amen. amen. In 3 John 2, scripture, God says, I wish above all things. Scripture says, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health. Tell somebody, God wants you to prosper. Yeah. And the very first thing God said to man when he created man in Genesis 1, 28, he said, Bible says, he said, be fruitful and multiply. So God wants us to do well. But the Bible says that God delights in the prosperity of his people. So, and you see, if your father is rich and you are poor, then there's a problem. <laughs> Amen. The child of kings are royals. They are princes and princesses. And princes and princesses don't beg. Amen. So if you're a child of God, you are not supposed to be a beggar. But God has instituted principles by means of which we should become blessed. And in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2, he says that if you shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do his commandments, no, that the Lord your God will set you on high. Amen. So it means that you getting to know what God's word says and doing it is what will cause God to set you on high. May God set you on high. You didn't hear me I said, may God set you on high. Then he continues to say that you shall be blessed all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if, it's a conditional clause, you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. And the verse 3 says, you shall be blessed in the city and you shall be blessed in the field. And it continues on and on. Amen. So these scriptures are trying to let us know that obedience to the word of God is what causes us to be blessed. Now, what is it for God, in Genesis 8.22, instituted the fact that if we are to make it on earth and to be blessed, then we have to live by the principle of sowing and reaping. Somebody say, sowing and reaping. So, he, he said, while the earth remains, and that was after, this statement was made after Noah had made sacrifices, giving something to God. Amen. Bible says that Noah offered sweet smelling savor, I mean, uh, sacrifice unto the verse 20. He made sacrifices unto the Lord. And when the Lord smelled the savor, he said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Hallelujah. Yeah. He made sacrifices. And the 22 says that, then the Lord said, while the earth remains, see time and harvest. Somebody say, see time and harvest. Okay, so, so long as this earth is around, what will pertain and cause people to do well is adhering to the laws of see time and harvest. So I'm going to be talking about now Seed time is talking about sowing. Is that right? Giving. So, primarily, we are to live by giving. And when we give, then we get. Can I have an amen? amen. So, there are different types of giving, which I've talked about already. The giving of your tithe. Number two is what? Giving of to, for kingdom development offerings. Then number three is giving to the to men of God. Or the prophetic gifts, and then number four is given to the poor. So we are still on our tithing. So today I want to be sharing on how eh, tithing activates the laws of sowing and reaping. How your tithe activates, it stirs up 
the laws of sowing and reaping. It starts at Genesis 8, 22. Remember, Galatians 6, 7 says that, for so a man sows, so shall he reap. Hallelujah. Now, which group of professionals do they really work with this? It's farmers. Farmers have long known the laws of sowing and reaping. Amen? And they have consistently activated these laws for their own benefit. A farmer knows that if he doesn't sow, he's not going to reap. So they are always doing that. Amen? And for any successful farmer has learned never to violate this law of sowing and reaping. Tell your friend, don't violate the law of sowing and reaping. Just like the farmers do. Amen. Yeah. The farmers never violate the law of sowing and reaping. You know, and those who understand and deploy the laws of sowing and reaping are wealthy. So wealthy people, see, wealth, people are wealthy, they don't just sit down. They make an investment. There's a sowing they do. So wealthy people are sowers. That's what they are sowers. They sow something. They sow their time. They sow whatever. Now, God also created the seed in living things, giving them the mysterious power to reproduce themselves. Because what we sow, we sow seeds. Inside the seed is a mysterious power to reproduce itself. Amen. So when you have a seed, the seed in the seed is your tree. And on your tree are your fruits. And in your fruits are your seeds. Amen? And these seeds will now be repropagated. And before you realize that one seed has turned into a garden and your garden has become a forest. That shall become your portion. Amen? Amen. Seeds have life hidden deep within them. So every seed you have, eh, eh, I have my seed here. Is that right? It may even look at like it's an inanimate seed. That's money. But it's a seed. And so long as I consider it as a seed, there's a hidden life in it. <laughs> yeah, there's a hidden life. When you take corn, Eh? The corn that you are holding, eh? a grain of corn, there's a hidden life of getting lots of corn grains out of it. Can I have an amen? I want to take my time so that you can understand some stuff well. Amen. Every animal you see today is a result of a seed. Eh? Yeah. On the average... Most lions live for about eight years in the wild and the 20 years in the zoo. But the lions we see today, they are not the lions who lived 200 years ago. It means that their seed has been propagated. Is that right? So it means that for your prosperity to be propagated, for it to be perpetuated, it means that you must have a seed that keeps reproducing itself. So without a seed, what you have will die. <laughs> Are you getting me? So some lions which were born from 50 years ago, if they didn't have a seed, they didn't release a seed, then the lion kingdom would have been extinct. So what has given birth to lions and we see lions today is because of the fact that they have released their seed and their seed in the seed is a hidden life and that hidden life of new lions which keep perpetuating. So it means that when you have a seed, that seed is what is going to give you a future prosperity. When you throw away your seed or you eat your seed, you have eaten your future. Can I have an amen? Am I preaching something good to you today? Hallelujah. So there is a miracle of a seed that has sustained the creation and produced every living thing around you. So all your friends 
or every good thing around you is, is, is a result of a seed. Someone says seed. Amen. And like I said, even though money is a lifeless, inanimate object, it contains the mysterious power of a seed. Amen. Yeah. That is why in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 10, look at what uh, Paul said. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 10. He says that, but this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also what? Sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Verse 7. Every man according to, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not gradually of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. May you be a cheerful giver. And God is able, when you are a cheerful giver, God is able, and it's a conjunction, linking what? The giving to what he's going to say is that as you give, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So if you want all grace to abound towards you, you must be a giver. That you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So if you, if you have to always have all sufficiency, to always have all, it means that it is, there will be a time that you can have scarcity. But if you always want to have all sufficiency, then you must and abound to every good work, then you must be somebody who keeps sowing. <laughs> you must keep sowing. Tell somebody, keep sowing. Amen. The next verse. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Glory to God. So, tithing is a form of giving. Is that right? Good. So, every time you give your tithes, you are sowing a seed into the house of God. Tell your friend, every time I give, I, I give my tithe, I'm sowing a seed in the house of God. Amen. And when you sow your seed in the house of God, what will happen? You are activating the laws of sowing seeds and reaping harvests. <laughs> Eh? You are so, so every time that you are, you are giving your tithe, your tithe is a form of giving. Is that right? And so you are sowing what? You are activating the laws of sowing and reaping. The laws of sowing. There are laws. There are laws of sowing. And I'm going to give you some of the laws. Amen. Okay. Are you here with me? Good. I want you to understand the stuff very well. You know, Malachi 3.10. Eh? It's a form of giving. He says that bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be what? Meat in my house. I told you that every time you give your tithe, you are sowing a seed into the house of God. And he says that bring your tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat or provision or sustenance in my house. I visited it. And when you bring the tithe, what will happen? I, I will open unto you what? The windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. So it means that the tithing is a form of giving that as you give the tithe, God pours you out a blessing. Something beyond what you yourself you gave. Amen. So those of you who are not paying tithes, it means that all you, 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 you have to live on is what you have. You are not sowing a seed for your future. one of the times I will show you how you can sow seeds for God to build you a house. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to quickly give you 15 laws of sowing and reaping. 15 laws. Eh? Yeah. Because when you sow seeds, what are you doing? You are activating the laws of sowing. and say, So your tithing activates what? The laws. Someone say laws. The laws. So what are the laws? Number one. The first law is that you must plant something. Tell somebody, plant something. Plant something. Yeah. Genesis, John chapter 12 verse 24. Yeah? The first law of sowing and reaping teaches you that you must plant something. You, you must actually have a seed that you have sown. You must sow a seed. If you have not sown anything, you cannot expect anything. Okay? If you have not sown 
corn on your, on your field, do you go and expect to harvest corn? You can't expect. So you must sow something. And it is only when you sow that you go and expect. Amen. But if no corn is, is sown into the ground for it to die, it, it remains the same. So, so for many people, your hundred cities is all you have to spend. If you don't give out of your hundred cities, your ten cities is all you have to spend. And that, will, that is what is supposed to keep you, supposedly, if you don't sow out of it. Are you getting me? So when you get your salary or your income or whatever, and you don't give anything out of it as a seed, and remember that in the seed is a hidden life. A hidden life of a great harvest. If you don't, you, so you must always recognize a seed as having life in it. Amen. Are you here with me? Glory to God. Number two. So, you must begin to see things in the light of sowing and reaping. Amen. Yeah. So, remember that paying your tithe is the planting of a seed. And so, if you plant a seed, what will happen? You are going to get a harvest. Amen. So pay your tithe, open the door for you to reap financially in the future. Is that right? So if you don't pay your tithe, it means that there's no door open for your future financial breakthrough. Number two, you must plant in good ground. You see, many people say, oh, I gave my tithe or whatever, but the ground was not good. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Uh, you want to sow into a bad ground. Eh? Yeah. Matthew 13, 8. Other seed fell into good ground and brought forth fruits. Some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirtyfold. So it must be good ground. Tell us about the good ground. Yeah. Do you know that we don't generally we don't grow apples in tropical Africa. That means in West Africa, we don't grow apples. Our red soil here yeah, doesn't help for the growth of that. And the weather, are you getting me? But when you go to the temperate regions like Europe and, and, and South Africa, it helps them to grow. So you realize that your seed will flourish when you plant it into a good soil. So a good soil is a good church. And this church is a good church. You see, a ministry that is involved in evangelism, involved in the preaching of the pure word of God unto people, let them become Christocentric. A church that is teaching people righteousness and for them to live a life of commitment and dedication to the Most High God. That is, a, is a, a good soil to plant your seed. Can I have an amen? Yeah. But when you go and plant your seed in a dead ministry, some place where they are departed from scriptures, and uh, no scripture, something, just every time, they are just singing, and you move, and whatever. And no, no nothing. Every time, storytelling and things like that, you know. Listen to me. You see, you, you may not know something. The word, people think that, see, the word is anointed. So where the word of God is preached, there's an anointing in the place. Yes, the word is anointed. In the beginning was a word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Is that right? In him was a life, and the life was what? The light of the world. The word is Christ. And Christ is what? The anointed one and his anointing. So every time that we are preaching the word of God, we are actually releasing Christ. We are releasing Jesus unto you. We are releasing the life of God unto you. Yes. So we are actually spraying you with the anointing. Yes. So you can, be, you can sit in the church service and we are not praying for healing and you'll be healed. We are, not, we are not talking about financial breakthrough or whatever and God will cause a certain grace to come upon you. Amen. Amen. So long as it's the word of the Lord. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Number three, you must. So number one is what? You must plant something. Number two, you must plant in good ground. Number three, you must plant large amounts of seed. Large. Amen. Why is this so? Because large amounts of seed are needed because many seeds are lost in the process of being planted. Eh? Very few seeds end up in the in the right place. Usually, you see, when you see the planters and they are planting, sometimes they throw it and all those things. As they are planting, some will hit a rock. Eh? Some will be on a stone. Some will, some will be eaten by birds. Some will be eaten by mokua squirrels. Some will, some, some will be eaten by monkeys. Are you getting me? Some, will not, some may fall on a leaf or whatever. So, so you realize that some of the seeds may be lost. But because you planted plenty, some will also survive. Yeah. And they will give you. Amen. Yeah. You know, because of this fact, eh, every business makes its projections with this in mind. Even when you talk to the bankers, as they are giving people loans and code, they know that some people they won't pay the loans. It's bad debt. Yes, it's, ba it's bad debt. So they factor all of those things into it. That is why their interest rates and all those things, they factor it. So those, those who pay, pay for those who, who run away. <laughs> so most businesses calculate their profits expecting to suffer losses, stealings, yes, accidents and unfortunate events. Are you getting me? Yeah. So, large amounts of seed must always be sown because of the inevitable losses. I hope you are getting me. So, you must sow more. Second Corinthians 9, 6. That's why it says that the, the living Bible says, remember this, if you give little, you get little. A farmer who plants just a few seeds will get only small crop. But if he plants much, he will reap much. So, may you plant much, you reap much. Number four, some of your seeds will be lost. So another important truth is that about sowing seeds is that many of, the, of them will be lost. Eh? The reason why a man has millions of spams is because most of them are simply lost on the way to the good ground. Hello? Yeah. In fact, it's been found out that when a man has less than 40 million sperms, he will have difficulty in achieving pregnancy. He has to have a lot of sperms. And out of these many sperms, eh, they must be motile. They must have a high sense of motility. Yeah? Motile. Motility means movement. Is that right? And they are swimming like swimming across the Atlantic Ocean. So they must have energy. Are you getting me? Yeah, that is why men have to eat food. Also, that helps in the building up of their spermatozoans. You know, and they, they shouldn't just have all this, you know, they shouldn't just be there, but they must be strong and have a high sense of motility to swim towards an egg. So some of them, as they are swimming, they get tired and they stay. And it is only one that is able to, once the head hits the nucleus of the, uh, of, of the egg, that's it. Then fertilization, all the rest are disqualified. So no one egg is fertilized by, interestingly, no one egg is fertilized by two sperms. So the sperm that fertilizes is the winning sperm. And guess what? It's a winning sperm that produces you. And that is why you are a winner. You didn't hear me. I say you are a winner. No matter what, you, have, you, you won. You won. You won. Amen. It's a win among more than 40 million spams. Yes. But you see, for our lesson today, you will see that the man had to release many eh, spams, millions of spams. But it's only one that was successful. 
But the one that was successful has produced a wonderful person like you. <laughs> yeah, has produced a wonderful person like you. Amen. Amen. And for those who are males also, you see, that one sperm eh, that produced you has also produced many millions of sperms. <laughs> are, are you getting me? Yes, many millions of sperms. And they are being reproduced all the time. Millions of sperm, millions of sperm, millions of sperms. Plenty seed. Isn't it a blessing? Yeah. <laughs> Am I teaching some good word here? Yeah. So, the, the truth is that some of the offerings you give will be lost as seeds that falls by the wayside. Because sometimes, the time you are giving, the way your mind is cry, you are giving and you are memorizing. You are giving and you are saying, so what are they doing with my offering? You are giving and you are questioning things. Is that right? And so as you are doing that, you, know, you are not allowing your seed to die. It's like a seed that has been planted. And as the seed has been planted, you are not allowing the seed to mix with the soil, so you go and uproot it. Those who are talking like that, they are uprooting their seed. So if you plant your seed and you you are uproot, it will never do well. So that's why you are losing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Some of, so some of your seeds will fall by the wayside. And wayside, you know that, uh, so I went to sow, some fell by the wayside. What happened to the wayside ones? Birds. And that means, it's talking about demons. So you even sowed in fear. And anytime you are doing anything in fear, you must know that you are being motivated by demons. So they will just come and take the thing away because anything that which is not done in faith, you can't get. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That is why you're giving. That's why every, most of the time, the things we are doing here, we share, we add scripture, prayer topics, scripture, whatever, so that you pray in faith and you give in faith. And that's why I've taken my time for all these weeks to be teaching what I'm teaching you. Yeah. So that you don't do it like they are told us something or the man is saying something to if that frighten us or threaten us. No threatening, no frightening. But it is doing it out of love and obedience to the word of God. And knowing what God's word says. And so as you're applying the word of God, it's working for you. May it work for you. Amen. Amen. So there's no way to determine. You see, some of the seeds we said will fall by the wayside. And there's no way to determine which one will be lost and which one will fall into the good ground. And that is why you just have to keep on sowing. Because some of your seeds will be lost anyway. <laughs> Am I teaching something here? So coming to church many times and being given many opportunities to give, your tithes and offerings will, will definitely increase your chances of reaping a harvest. So every time that you come to church and say, it's offering time, it's offering time, means that you are being given an opportunity to keep sowing and sowing and sowing so that you, you can get opportunity to get more reaping. But if you just only sowed once, is that right? Maybe only Sunday or some of you, twice in a, a month or just once in a month or when yourself come or Papa Noba you say today I feel like whatever and all those things you are not sowing is that right? and Isaiah 32 20 says that blessed are so those who sow beside many waters so you must learn to sow beside what? many waters so somebody, many waters amen yeah and when you read Mark 4, 3 to 5, he said, it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Someone say wayside. wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Have you seen it? Yeah. And some fell on stony ground. Someone say stony ground. stony ground. Where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. You know, so the seed falls on different grounds. Is that right? Number five. Some of the, your seeds will never develop. Matthew 13, 7. Some fell among thorns, 
and the thorns sprang up and choked them. So some of your seeds will be choked up. <laughs> it's like investment. It's like doing business. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. It's like doing business. There are times that you can go and invest somewhere and the thing doesn't work. Eh? Yeah. I read the story of somebody who had done poetry. He brought their old chicks, you know, and tried to, you know, give them the best of food, give them the best of whatever, and they never grew, they never did well. Yeah. It's because he, he bought bad, you know, their old chicks. Is that right? The seed was not right. And so they didn't do well. Eh? There are times that you go and buy maybe uh, uh, some plants and expecting that they will grow, but they don't grow because that particular one was not good enough. I hope you are getting me. Uh -huh. So sometimes the, some of the seeds don't grow or they don't do well. But that's the reason why you must, you shouldn't just sow only once. You must sow differently. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 and 2 and verse 6. I'll show you something quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. You, see, you have to just learn to be a generous giver. Is that right? If you are there, you Charlie, get this. Charlie, this. Charlie, that. You are so indifferently, eh? so a smile, so a kindness, eh? so a helping hand. Is that right? So a helping hand. So this, so that. Eh? You see, one of the things that has helped the whites is that they can be very kind. Eh? Most of us blacks, we are very self-centered. And especially Ghanaians. Even when you are driving, somebody is there, he won't give you a chance. And he will play you wicked. Yes. Yeah. And somebody said, me, I struggle because I got it. So you too, you must struggle. Why? 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 If you struggle, why don't you rather make things easier for somebody else? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You see a white guy, he'll just go out of his way, just go and help do this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Ghana man, when your car falls in the car, he said, bring this before we lift you up. Even direction, they are giving direction. He said, show me, give me some before I will. I will. Yeah. Else they will show you the wrong direction. Ecclesiastes 1, 11, 1. Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after what? Many days. So if, if you don't cast your bread, will you find it? No. Verse 2. <laughs> Give a portion to seven. That means that do what is appropriate and also to eight. Eight is talking about an extra. Someone say extra. Yeah. Eight is talking about extra. So it means that when they say give, don't just give. So as you are saying, give the tithe 10%. Don't calculate tithe 10%. Pe -pe -pe. Eh? Like somebody just gave a tithe, you know, and then add the pesos. Eh? Eh? 24.884 pesos. Oh! So you couldn't make it 25 or even 30 cities. Oh! Or 84 cities, 76 pesos. That you. <laughs> Look. I've seen, so I've seen the, the, the person at the pesos. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Verse 6. Everybody read it with me. Verse 6. Verse 6. In the morning, everybody want to, in the morning sow your seed, and in the evening withhold not your hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall what? Be alike good. Are you getting me? So you don't know which one. So that's why you have to sow more. Tell somebody, sow more. Okay. Number six. You must plant the type of seed you expect. If you want coconut, you must plant coconut. If you want papa, you must plant papa. Genesis 1.12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. Is that right? So... You must be somebody who sows more and more. If you want, so it means that if you want, if you want a house, you can sow in cements. Because to get a house, house involves cements. Is that right? Yeah. 
So maybe you want a house, you can't give a house, but you can give something that is within housing. <laughs> is that right? So then you can gain something from it. Then number seven, you, your seed must die. Tell somebody your seed must die. Every seed must die. You see, the seed must die and undergo decomposition. The seed must undergo decomposition and virtually melt away and be recomposed. Hmm? When, now, this is what happens when you plant your seed in the house of God. Eh? Your seed must die. When you plant your seed in the house of God, it enters the offering basket and melts away. Bring me an offering bowl here. Quick, 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 quick. Run like a young man. So the moment that you put your offering in this, is that right? You have planted a seed in the soil. You must let it melt away into the soil. Are you here with me? Yeah. You can no longer identify it as a traceable object. Because when something melts, it changes in it changes in its composition. Am I teaching something here? It has disappeared. So when you sow your seed in the church, you know, you give your tithe, your offering, it has disappeared. Eh? It belongs to the church and it's mixed up with everything else. But so it's mixed up in paying electricity bill, it's mixed up in paying water, mixed up in whatever. But you see, some people want to follow their money and watch its very every movement. Where is my where is my money? Did he enter the lights built? Did he enter this? Did he enter that? Did he enter that? You have not let your money die. And because you have not let your money die, unless a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So it's not going to bear much fruit for you if you don't let it die. So people don't know why they are not getting blessed away. Yeah, I said, but, and then, I said, they, they give the offering, and then they see the pastor come and dress. He says, it's maybe it's our money that you are used to wear the suits. He's wearing suits. Even if it's your money, yes, you, you are supposed to dress your pastor. Yes. Or you don't know, check the Old Testament. There are people who are today. The, the garment of the priest, he doesn't want to sew it himself. They stay. The water they drink. Yeah. Everything they use, we, we pay for it. Yeah, because they are working for the state. That's what we call them a buying. Yeah. So, so uh, if the, 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 the pastor too is uh, sorry. <laughs> That's all. I hey, am sorry. I hey, am sorry, but so so uh, as a matter of fact, I should be coming to you and every time after this, I say, you what are you bringing me? <laughs> give me, give me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You must, you must, you must, you must give me something to sustain me and my family. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You see, as you went to work and go, we're here, and truthfully, those of you, and we're praying. And praying for businesses. I said, as we go in there, let our people prosper. Let our people flourish. I was sitting here, just here, right at the back end. I've been praying for hours for you. So as you go in and you do things are well, no accident, no fire outbreak, no whatever, and all those things. If you have gone and it is well with you, you too, you must also remember us and bring us some. They enter freebie. And you say, maybe the pastor is paid. How much is he paid? How much is he paid? If you are to pay me, you have to pay me according to my qualification. I take my, my experience. People, when people are paid, they are paid by qualification, eh, experience, and everything. Many things, they factor it. As the HR people. Yes. Yes. They, we are paying all those things. That's why some people, when they go for it, they say, we can't pay you. We can't do this. We can't do this. <laughs> Amen. Are, are you learning something here? Yeah. So the, the seed must what? 
die. John 12, 24. Tell your friend, don't follow your money. Yeah. So when you give, you see, uh, uh, you see, sometimes some people even give something to somebody say, it's my shoe is wearing. Uh, you gave a, you are give, you have given somebody a wig. As a person is walking around and say, hey, the last time, it's a wig in wig. You know, you give somebody a dress. As a person has worn the dress, is going, say, have you seen my shirt, my trousers? You, you have not let it die. The seed you sow, you didn't let it die. And because you didn't let it die, you are not going to get a harvest. And why do, why do I say that? John 12, 24. Unless a corn of seed or a grain of seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So your corn of seed must die, mix up with the soil, unable to trace it. So don't trace anything you give to people. Don't trace it. It's a seed you have sown. Amen. And you are going to reap a mighty harvest later. <laughs> are you here with me? Yeah. If somebody came to work for us some time ago, and they said, well, we've laid our head, we put our neck down, and all those kind of things, we laid our neck. I said, you laid your neck, but when you came, you didn't have any qualification. We stood with you, prayed with you, you were able to go to university, open many doors for you, many good things has happened to you. That one, that one, nobody laid his neck. Yeah, it's neck to neck. You did something. <laughs> Amen. So say, and we have done something in the church. I don't know. You didn't do it for any man. It's your own seed. It's your own seed. You see, when I was young, uh, and the, uh, my mom, my mom used to work at a fishing harbor, and uh, uh, I went there to go and, and look for her for something, and then. I thought at least she sent me there. And then they were selling rice, some special rice. And in those days, they would say that, let one city die. So when they give you money, let one city die, it means that they will give the rice plus the macaroni and fish and meat and I mean with a, um, um, I want somebody to salivate. As a, uh, you know. They had all kinds of things. Man. And I think that day, I didn't, I didn't have one city. <laughs> Either I had 30 pesos or 50 cents. So when, when I went there, everybody said, let one city die. Peter said, let 30 pesos die. <laughs> but you see, when they say, let one city die, when the one city dies, they get their rice, they get their macaroni, eh? Eh? they get the egg, they get the willy, they get the fish, they get all kinds of things. You know, and when I said, let my, I said, let my 30 persons die, I was wondering whether I was going to get the same thing. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Even though I wanted one. So you see, unless your corn of seed dies, it remains the same. Am I teaching something here? Then, not only must it die, but you must, your seed must be given time to die. Write it. That's the eighth point. Your seed must be given time to die. Your seed also needs, it needs time to die. You see, if you keep watching the seed, it will seem to you that it never dies and never germinates. Yeah? You see, anytime you plant a seed, you keep looking at it. It's as if it never dies, never germinates. You must forget about it and decide never to remember the seed you have sown. When you plant a seed, you must forget it and never to remember that you have sown the seed. Yeah. When the farmer sows the seed, he just forgets it and with time he germinates. Amen. Yeah, it, it, it germinates. Yeah. Mm. And when you, when you do that, you would have given your seed enough time to go through the process when you just forget it. Let it go through the process. Ecclesiastes 11, 1. Cast your bread up. It was a seed I planted somewhere. Somebody said, I'm inviting you. I want you to come here. I want you to come here. I want you to come here. It's a seed. 
It's a seed I planted. Amen. It's a seed. You plant a seed. You plant a seed. You minister to certain people. I remember, you know, I, 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 I used to go and preach in these secondary schools and all those things, you know. And then when I became a, a young pastor one day, I, I was thrown out of my accommodation. And I just called one of them that I, I, I've been ejected. And the person just called their family, parents, and said, look, uh, this is my pastor friend or whatever. She has been ejected. And, all those. and they said, call him. Let him come. And so from wherever I was, I was, I was moved to one of the plush places in the whole of Ghana to live among the creme de la creme. Yes. And when I was struggling to feed myself, probably even just get a good meal to eat, because as a young person unmarried, I would just go and buy trophy in the evening and then try and chew my trophy in one evening. I think I finished from church after finishing preaching. I was so hungry. Look, preaching can exact energy out of you. Oh, yes. Finished preaching, I was so hungry and so tired. And then I, uh, I bought a trophy at the Osu Dankwa Circle area. I just got into my room. I didn't even put on the lights. Then I started trying to chew. That's how I was telling the thing, the thing going in time. You see, it's, it's like a tag of war. Time, time. When I put on the light, lo and behold, there was a wild long worm, tenia, that had been fried. You know, yeah. You know the turkey tail? The turkey tail. It was, a, it was not a turkey tie. Turkey tail. So, so just chewing, just like that. And then here I was taken to this nice place. Cantonments. And live among the creme de la creme and be fed breakfast, lunch, and dinner because of a seed that I planted. And those people that have planted the seed, they never imagined that anybody was going to give us a dime. Yes, never. And they became a family. Stayed there till I got married. A wedding cake was kept in their deep freezer. First and verse one to cut the cake there. I think was, our cake spent uh, three or five years. It was there. Anytime I, I wanted to eat, I would go there. Mommy also used to join me. You should come and eat some. We're all there, family. Out of one seed. I hope you're getting me. So as you are sowing seed, eh, as you are sowing seed, it's a great blessing for you in the future. Yes. Great blessing. You have no idea. A childhood friend just there chatting, 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 and all those things. I ended myself in America somewhere. Then he heard of me. He sent me money, bought me ticket, and said, I want you to fly over to this, this Chicago. Hey! And as I flew there, the guy was, you know, waiting on me. He was there ready to receive me. Had got his order to receive me. You know, and I, mean, I was... Some of the buildings I saw, I thought they were even church buildings. People were people's homes. Huge, giant one homes. Humongous. Yes. And, and I mean, it, 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 it's, it's dumbfounding. But out of a seed, seed of friendship, seed of kindness, seed of love, seed of doing something. Yeah, your seed. I'm telling you, seed. Seed, seed, seed. When they tell you somebody, go and help somebody, no, small, you are looking for money. Don't look for that. You go and help people in their house or whatever, clean bowls, whatever, you are looking for money. There are many things you don't ask for money. Yeah. Even when they are giving the money, say it's okay. Yes. I've learned to do that. Even preaching. Yeah, sometimes I'm invited to places I just say that they won't give a rest. It's okay. Just walk around. It's okay. That's okay. I just came to sow a seed. Just came to sow a seed. Yeah. And whenever you go in a place and what they give you, especially those of you in ministry, when they give you a seed, don't get angry and say, they didn't give you enough on the radio. And you are angry. I won't go there again. No. They didn't invite you. Go again. Go again. And carry your own money. And take care of yourself. Because God will use other people to become a blessing to you. Yeah. Oh, I've seen it so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One time I finished preaching in a church in America. Somebody just walked to me. 
pushing a pram, looked very ordinary, and handed me an envelope. I thought usual fifty CD, uh, fifty dollars or hundred dollars that would. But uh, then the person said, eh, "Don't worry, I'd written a note in, in the envelope. I'll take care of my own tithe out of it." And that was a whole medical doctor's salary, in America, and it's not small money. They're dollars, you know. For security reasons, I can't tell you. Yes. And I didn't preach more than 40 minutes. So, yes, not more than. So the thing is, it, it, it's a, meanwhile, you've gone to other places and they, they didn't give you. <laughs> you see, but you are not doing the thing for me. You are doing it for God. You are in employment for God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, employment for God. And so I see God blessing you. Amen. Amen. Are you learning something here? Yes. Cast your bread upon the waters. You know, number nine, your seed will grow by God's miracle power. That's what my seed will grow. First Corinthians 3, 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Hallelujah. May God give the increase. Amen. Hmm? Mark 4, 26 and 27. Uh, Mark 4, 26 and 27. Uh, are you there? He said, and so, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. See, no one really knows how a seed grows into a mighty tree. Yes. That it begins to develop calling karma cells, clearing karma cells, xylem vessels, phlegm vessels, and things like that. He doesn't know how he does. But it comes. Amen. Amen. Scientists have tried to analyze what exactly happens to the seed. But it is a miracle that a seed can grow into a mighty tree. So it's a miracle that your seed you are sowing will grow into a mighty tree. So when the time you are so you are having a seed and you are sowing it, you must know that it's a miracle. Ukunchona is a miracle. Ukunchona is a miracle. It's a miracle. Amen. Look at how you are sitting here. Eh? You are a miracle. Who is the biggest guy here? Really, I can't even see any big guy here. Eh? Eh? Everybody is standing there. Eh? And then, yeah, look at, uh, okay, look at this man. This man, yes, look at him. Put the camera, camera on him. Yeah, he's, put the camera on him. This gentleman there, eh? You see, this gentleman there was produced by a small seed. Eh? A microscopic seed. Eh? A winning, a winning sperm. A winning sperm. And, and eh, that little thing eh, here had to go undergo mitosis and meiosis. Yeah. Cell divisions into cell differentiations to form tissues and to form organs. Now, that small thing give him heart, kidney, liver, Spleen, stomach, bones. The thing that didn't, that didn't have bones has, has produced bones. It's a miracle. So the seed that you have today will produce a house for you, produce children for you, produce business for you, produce... Oh! The seed, the seed, the seed, the seed has produced... The seed has produced something. That little thing. Sometimes when you see your baby and the baby is born, taka, 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 and that little seed, all of a sudden, sometimes it grows taller and bigger than you. Yeah. Then you have to lift your head. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. It's a seed. So I'm just letting you know that the, the, the seed of your tithe you know, is going to, God said, I will pour unto you an immeasurable blessing. So every time that you are sowing, eh, you are planting, you must plant. Just no plant that the, in the seed is a hidden miracle. 
Write it. In the seed is a hidden miracle. So every shirt you give to somebody, every pair of shoes you give to somebody, every, every money you give to somebody, and especially, you see, you see, you can give to people when there are no good soils. But as for God's house, it's a good soil. <laughs> oh, I tell you. As for God's house, it's a good soil. Amen. As for God's house, it's a good soil. And once you plant, you are surely, surely, surely going to bless you are going to be blessed. Says, I'm going to be blessed. Amen. Yeah. So if you believe in this reality, you'll be happy to pay your tithes. So from today, you see, you should be happy to pay your tithes, knowing that you, you, are, you, you, are, you are holding what? A miracle seed. Just like a man releases his sperm. And he's going to produce... A, a, a child that will have a heart, have a neck, have ears, have nose, have no all kinds of things. And now this child is going to grow up to become somebody special. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you become a president, maybe a, a prime minister or whatever, a farmer or whatever. It's a blessing. And your seeds, your seed, one of your seeds is here. One of your seed has become this. One of your seed has become that. One of your seed, the seed. It is the investment of a seed that brings about a miracle power. Can I have an amen? Then... You must recognize your harvest when it comes. There are people who are good givers, but poor receivers. You know. To successfully activate the laws of sowing and reaping, you must be a good giver. That's what be a good giver. But don't only be a good giver, but be a good receiver. Yeah? You see, some people, they don't even know how to receive love. Oh, yes. When you are showing them love, they can't receive love. They are even very suspicious. Yeah. Very suspicious. Why are you doing this? You know I mean? And maybe if you're in a relationship, maybe you are doing something bad. That's the reason why you are doing this to cover up. You know. Or you want to kill me. That's the reason why you have taken me there to go and put something inside my whatever. They don't know how to say. Yeah. To receive, you must recognize the day of the harvest. You see, there's a, a, a seed time. So there's a time to sow. Then also the time where you are receiving a harvest. When we're going to start spiritual life, I remember one of my friends told me, he said that you have sown for so many years, so this is not the time where you say you are going to be receiving harvest. Yeah, that's, a, that's, why, that's one of the things he told me. He said, you have been sowing, sowing, so it's not going to be the beginning of sowing. And yours is going to be a time of harvest. Yes. And I remember somebody just coming to me and telling me that, you know what, when you are studying ministry, all the guys are studying, they're students, young, young people. When they took their offering and they put it together and I take, I give my offering, I realized that my offering has, has conquered all of them. Yeah, combined. All of them, their own combined. My offering has combined. They, they know it. Eh? And if somebody decided that just in fulfillment of, that, of you know, what my friend told me, he said, Every month, I'm going to give you 400 pounds, sorry, 100 dollars. So every month, the person will sign me a check of 400 dollars for two years. So you see that as we're eating, we're not eating the thing. It is not the, the offering of the people. How much was it? <laughs> God was blessing us from many ways because we are in employment for God. That is why it's a very dangerous thing to call a pastor a thief. Yeah, because you don't know how he gets his stuff. Amen. You, you don't know how he gets his stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of the seeds that you sow, you see, you, I, I, I was saying that you must recognize your habit. Is that not it? Yeah. God can be blessing you in different ways. Is that right? Yeah. In different ways. Sometimes places where you are going to so you are going to pay money. And God gives you a, a has, you have a friend there, a relation. Go and see this person. Your friend will come and see me. Or do this. 
I'll do that and do that for you. So, so, you see, many people are looking at the payment in the form of money. But it's in the form of good health. Yeah. It's in the form of some favors. Yeah. It's the form of things not coming to see your things. Yeah. In the form of as the rains came down and people's buildings are being pulled down, your stuff are not being pulled down. Yeah. Are you getting me? God is giving you, your, your, your giving has become a divine insurance. Yeah. Ah, I was talking to a friend today, just before he said, and he said, who? Oh, his sons are doctors. One of them is a medical doctor or whatever, and one has got into the military. I was a captain, has been made a major. I was a young guy. Someone was my schoolmate, his son. Young already. <laughs> and his other son graduated from medical school in one of the top medical schools outside the country today. And I was just saying that it's all part of the blessings. As you are serving God, are you getting me? And giving to the house of God and whatever. So God is blessing here and God bless here. Blessed are those who sow beside many waters. So anybody who says that you are giving, you are wasting your time by joining the ashes, by joining this, and we have done this, and we have done summer, and then so no, no, no. If they don't done summer, you to you to do your sum. So that you too get your blessings. Amen. But why do you have to do it and stop if there's blessing in the thing? You have to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Kess is the one who, who puts his hands on the plow and moves it away. And nothing, listen to me, there are times that as you are serving God, you get to a time whereby you can feel discouraged. You may even think that you are not being appreciated. You may even think that whatever and all those things. But always change the gear and tell yourself that it's unto the Lord. And from the Lord, I'll get my reward. Amen. Amen. So, so many times the Lord returns your harvest in a way you never expected. So ask God to open your eyes so that you can appreciate his blessings. Eh? Matthew 20 verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. The songwriter says, count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you. Hallelujah. The next one, number 11. Do not refrain from sowing unlikely seeds. Don't refrain from sowing unlikely seeds. Someone say unlikely seeds. You see, there are many seeds that look unlikely to prosper, but they will prosper. Amen. Yeah. Somebody was. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. There was somebody eh, who. Who went to give a seed eh, of five dollars? Some say five dollars. Yeah, five dollars. You don't say dollars. You say five dollars. Uh, you must start practicing when you go to America. You are going to five. Uh, some you didn't say amen. You don't want to go. Amen means so let it be. Like joke, like joke. Before you realize you are there. Uh, amen. Yeah. And then, so when he was giving the seed, when the pastor said, listen, take the words of your pastor serious. Are you here with me? Yes. Then the pastor said, you know, he was giving the five dollars seed and, to the, and the pastor said, this is a car. The next day, somebody called this guy and gave him a car. So, the five dollars was what? An unlikely Seed. Unlikely seed. Amen. Somebody gave does some church something. He went and gave five hundred dollars. Unlikely seed. Another person got up and gave him keys, not to a car, not to a house. But an aeroplane, aircraft, unlikely seed, unlikely seed. So every time that you are sowing a seed, seed is also the seed as I heard, an unlikely seed that will bring a mighty blessing your way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I don't have a house because of an unlikely seed. 
went to sow a seed. Yeah. Not even praying for that thing. But after I just went, somebody said, I've got land here, I've got this, 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 that. He said, Anytime. I never paid one penny for my land. Unlikely seed. My architect designed my house for me for free. Would even come around and give me money as well. Unlikely seed. Someone said, unlikely seed. So, whatever you are doing in the house of God today is an unlikely seed. Some of you, out of that, you will say, you will marry her, you'll be so surprised. Look at our sister, Auntie Jenfua. God married at 50, not having married before. No child, nothing. She was in the church. Come every Sunday. Sometimes in a whole year, she never misses a church service. With the children ministry. This, 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 this. Pam! She got married. Fool, don't know. We did it here. Unlikely seed. Unlikely seed. Someone say unlikely seed. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Ecclesiastes 11, 6. In the morning sow your seed. In the evening withhold not your hand. For thou knowest not. Thou knowest not. Which one is going to prosper? <laughs> hey! An unlikely seed is going to change your life. Look at Tete Kwashi. Came from Fernando Po. And put a seed, cocoa seed. Don't know whether he just ate the thing and the thing sweetie, sweetie him, and then he, he kept licking, licking the thing and put the seed in his bag and came to Ghana and planted the seed at Mampon. Look at out of that, they are giving Cocoa Marketing Board scholarships. Out of that, our roads were made from. Yeah, see, is it the highest yielding whatever for a long time? I don't know whether he's a leading. Our many of our state buildings, the seed, the unlikely seed. That is why even in your family you may look like an unlikely seed, but that unlikely seed will be a special blessing to your family. You that they didn't respect, you that they never appreciated, you that you thought you are never, you are going to be the star. The shining star. Amen. The eye of the family. Amen. The ear of the family. Amen. The glory of God shall be your portion. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear me. Amen. Am I teaching something here? Yeah. That's why you should never withhold your hand when it's time to give an offering or pay your tithe. See it as an opportunity to be blessed. Perhaps the tithes you pay in this month will become a seed for your children's school fees. Or an international door to open. Or somebody to buy you tickets with hotel accommodation. Go and tell you, go to the Maldives. For Maldives, go to America. Just go show you show show just enjoy and come. You'll be so surprised that out of that seed, you see, I know one guy who helped the, his pastor so much. One day he was just there. I know the guy very well. He decided that he was going to, every month he'll give a certain portion of his money to his pastor. Yeah, to honor his pastor. Apart from his tithes, you know, that he was given. Then he started, he was led to give his one particular man to sow suits and things for his pastor. He did it. And then he said, now to give a whole salary. So I think for about three months, he decided that he was going to do that thing. And then as he was doing that, a certain grace came upon him and anointed him. And he got involved. He used to sit at the back of the church. He ended up becoming the, 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 the resident pastor of the church. Yes. When he was getting married, when he was getting married, they had to bring his Wedding suits and clothing all from England. Wedding cakes. And somebody just gave him, after the wedding, key. What is that? Car key. Another one. Three. So they got another set of keys. What is that? This was a 
a kids for a three bedroom house, do we still say it is your gift? Wow. Unlikely seed, unlikely seed, unlikely seed, unlikely seed. In seven is pastor. Amen. I mean, some people thought that, and you see, he, he brought some people together. And he said that, no, this thing I'm doing for my pastor, I'm getting blessed. He brought people together and formed an association that every month we were giving, we were bringing money together to be able to support the amount of God, to give to the amount of God every month. They used to invite me when they are doing presentation to be there, to be honoring the amount of God. And all of them, God has lifted them and blessed. Oh, my goodness. A cup of water to a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. This family invited me uh, to Europe and they had this little boy. And as well, they did me good. Oh my goodness, did me good. Wolf. Feed me uh, uh, anything, anything you want, to, uh, clothing, whatever. And they had a little boy. And I, prayed, I remember praying for this guy. Eh? Today, this guy is playing one of the English teams. And his father, his father was saying that, his father said that, oh, since he had what he had, I don't know what he Inviting a man of God to your house, let him sleep and sharing what you think you have with him and honoring him and pouring his heart. And interesting, every time I call the family, I say, how is this person? How is this person? How is this person? And God, God has place all of them, all the children very well. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? Am I teaching something here? Yeah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Yeah. Then you, some of your harvest, I think I have to close, okay. It's time. It's time to close. I don't know when I'm going to give you this. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to give it to you. But I think I have to close. Uh, should I give it to you? Okay, I'll give you two quick points. Uh, use some of your harvest as a seed. You see, every harvest you get, don't eat all. Hmm? Second Corinthians nine ten. Living translation, uh, the Living Bible says, "For God, who gives seed to the farmer to plant, and later on good crops to harvest and eat, will give you more and more seed to plant, Amen. and will make it grow so that you can give away more and more fruit from your harvest." Hallelujah. So when blessings come. Remember to pay your tithes and honor God. Honoring God is the first thing you must do when you are blessed. Tell your friend, honoring God is the first thing you must do when you are blessed. But you see, unfortunately, many people forget the Lord in the day of their blessing. They forget their church. They forget their pastor. They forget, oh yeah, they forget. When they need prayer, they know where to go to. When they get blessed, when they get blessed, they know where to go to. They begin to say, oh, I earn too much to pay tax. 10% is too much for the church. Yeah? Listen, if you do not use part of your harvest as a seed, poverty will come upon you in the future. Write that. If you don't use part of your harvest as a seed, poverty will come upon you in the future. Do not set your eyes on money and feel secure. Proverbs 23, 5, what does it say? Riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. So do not set your eyes on money and feel secure. Money is deceptive. In fact, the Bible calls it the, the deceitfulness of riches. Money deceives. That's why when people get more money, they become pompous. And the money is telling you you'll be rich forever. I've seen people who used to be very rich. At a point in time, what to eat was even a problem. 
You need to put your trust in God. Don't let your harvest lead you to the common delusions of rich people. So when you get a harvest, sow some. That's why when you get a harvest of your salary, of your income, sow some in tithing and in offerings. And if for all the four categories, is that right? Give your tithe, give for kingdom development, bless your man of God as well, and give to the poor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me just give you the last one because of time. You must save some of your harvest. Tell somebody, save some. Mm -hmm. Genesis 41, 33 to 36. You know, when you read that, you are going to find out that you have to learn to save some of the harvest that God brings to you. Why? Because life is in seasons. That's what they, life is in seasons. A good season is of, often followed by a bad season. Eh? When you look at the seasons, you know. So different seasons are not also the result of a curse somewhere. Sometimes when things go down, it doesn't mean there's a curse. It's just a different season. Just when it's a season. And God has determined that the earth will have different seasons. That's why we've got winter. We've got summer. We've got what? Fall. That is what we call autumn. Is that right? So autumn, the leaves fall. Winter, you don't see whatever on it. Then there's summer. Then there's what again? There's spring. So Bible says, while the earth remains, there will be what? Seed time, Genesis 8, 22, and there will be what? Cold and heat, summer and winter. Have you seen? Day and night. There's day. So if there's day, it's a, when the night comes, it doesn't mean it's a curse. Because God said there will be what? Seed time, harvest, there will be cold and there will be heat. There will be summer, there will be winter. There will be day, there will be night. So when it's your day, you must prepare for the night. When it's summer, you must prepare for winter. When there's cold, I mean heat, you must prepare for cold. When there's sea time, or when there's harvest, you must prepare for sea time. Amen. Expect the seasons to come and go. Tell somebody, expect the seasons to come and go. You see, when you read Genesis 41, 33 to 36, Joseph advised Pharaoh to keep a fifth of his harvest. If you are to truly benefit from the harvest God has given you, you need to keep part of the savings for the next season of lean cows. So, tell somebody, next season. Yeah. Read the Genesis 41, 29 to 31, just uh, to show you something over there. The season of cows, lean cows, is so severe that it will eat up the season of fat cows. Are you there? Read it with me. Behold, there come what? Seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of, of Egypt. Continue. And there shall arise after them, after great plenty, shall arise what? Seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land. Have you seen it? Good. And the farming shall consume the land. Mm -hmm. 31. And the plenty shall not be known. The plenty what? Shall not be known in the land by reason of that farming following. Have you seen it? So it means that a certain farming can come and wipe away the fact that you were once rich. If you don't plan for the future. And one of the surest insurance you can have is to have insurance with God. By giving to us. Look at people who went and made investment into various whatever. I mean, the, the way the, the, what happened to the money and things like that. But your insurance with God is always assured. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. So, when you sow, you are applying the principle of what? When you give your, your tithe, you are going to apply the principle of sowing and reaping. So, you are going to reap. 
may that become your portion. Soon, what are the laws of sowing and reaping? Number one, you must plant something. Number two, you must plant in good ground. Number three, you must plant large amounts of seed. Number four, some of your seeds will be lost. Number five, some of your seeds will never develop. Number six, you must plant the type of seeds you expect. Number seven, your seed must die. That means that you must let it go. Number eight, you must be, you, your seed must be given what? Time to die. Number nine, your seed will grow by God's miracle power. May that become your portion. Number 10, you must recognize your harvest when it comes. Number 11, do not refrain from sowing what? Unlikely seeds. Number 12, use some of your seed as a harvest. Number 13, you must save some of your harvests. Amen. You must save some of your harvests. You must you use some of your harvest as a seed. So you must use some of your harvest as a seed. Is that right? And then you must save some of your harvest. You know. So when you get money, don't eat all. Eh? Don't eat all. Save some. No matter how little the money is, still save some. Develop a culture of giving. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that when we apply these principles, we're going to be very, very blessed. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Are you going to apply? Preach. So from today, don't, anytime you are giving, know that it's a future blessing. So give your tithing with excitement. You know, when you are bringing your tithe, you should be dancing. When you are giving offering, that's why offering time, you go to a place, you can see their future blessing. Nobody should give with complaining. So that your seed, so your seed doesn't fall on wayside for demons, the best come and eat it up, demon. Or on stony ground. Is that right? But your seed must fall on good ground. Father, we thank you. May our causes that will plant good seeds and may our seed fall on good grounds and bear fruits. As we are going to give our offerings today, may your people be so blessed as they give their offerings. In Jesus' name, amen.